Now to a company that is using the direct-to-consumer model while trying to disrupt the sports apparel market. It's called Greatness Wins. It was launched last year by Untuck It founder Chris Riccobono with an assist from a few power players, Derek Jeter, Wayne Gretzky, Mitz, Misty Copeland. Currently offers men's and boys' athletic wear with a women's line coming this fall. Here to discuss his latest venture, baseball and more, Derek Jeter, New York Yankees legend and MLB Hall of Famer, as well as a co-founder of Greatness Wins, and Chris Riccobono, the founder of Greatness Wins. Welcome to, welcome to all of you. I'm thinking, you know, a hockey player, a baseball player, and a ballet dancer walk into a bar. It sounds like the beginning of a joke, but this is no joke, Chris Riccobono. This is a legitimate, performance-oriented athletic apparel company. So the question is, what is it that makes your products materially, pun intended, different from a shirt or a pair of shorts or a hoodie that I could buy from a big company that has a four-letter name that begins with N. Hey, thanks for having me. I think there's a few reasons. You know, over the pandemic, I had a little extra time, and I was thinking of another area that I could possibly disrupt. And the one thing that stuck out to me was the quality of athletic apparel. And then you had on the other side the athleisure brands, and athleisure brands fit great very high quality product, but they weren't designed with performance in mind. So I saw a gap in the industry and thought, we need to create a high quality athletic apparel brand. One that not only performs great with upper end fabrics, but one that looks great, fits great, lasts, doesn't pill, washes well. So to me, um, this is kind of a, a niche in the market that, that wasn't there that we're solving. So, so you would say, uh, I, I'm taking it here, uh, Chris, that you, and I have some of your Untuck It products. They're very good, love the fit, love the look, the whole business. You would say that Lululemon does not produce a, a, a quality performance-oriented garment for, for, for yoga people and, and workout, or, or am I taking I it too make, far? No, they make a great product. I just don't know if it's designed first with performance in mind. I think it's designed first with look in mind and then to perform. For us, it's all about performance. Our fabrics are tested, and the first thing we are thinking about is how is this fabric going to perform you know, when running or lifting or working out. But at the same time, we know that, that people want this modern fit. They want something that fits consistently over and over again, um, and they want something that lasts. So, so I just think it's a little bit different different for us is that performance is first and then quality and performance is first and then Derek, second is how do you look. Derek, you've grown up wearing other companies' brands. Uh, I can remember seeing you in, in the swoosh and, and other products. How would you describe these as different, number one, as, as, you, as you experience them and wear them? And number two, how involved have you become in literally helping with the design and the specifications and so on and so forth? And I promise you we'll talk baseball in a minute. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say thank you to Courtney for trying to bust our bubble before we even <laughs> yeah. came on. But I think you we'll know, get one, of back. The, <laughs> one of the keys are when you have a new company or, or you know, a startup, because we're still a startup, we're fairly new, we have the ability to adjust on the, on the run. So I'm sure there'll be some adjustments along the way. But yeah, you're right. I've had great relationships with athletic brands throughout my career, with multiple athletic brands throughout my career. And I think anytime you've had the that type of experience, you always think of ways that you can do things in your mind a little bit better. And, and as Chris says, we're, we're focusing on performance, quality of fit, sustainability, comfort. Um, but look, I, I don't have a bad thing to say about any of the brands that I've been involved with or been associated with. But I think at the same time, I've been able to learn. So when you say my level of involvement, look, I'm involved from, you know, the creative aspect, the marketing aspect. You know, I met Chris probably, I would say we were getting close to about two years ago. And we started talking about that. He was telling me about his idea and, and he wanted me to be involved. And I said, well, hey, look, you know, if I'm going to be involved, I'm going to bring the knowledge that I have in the space. We all know how much knowledge Chris has in the space. And, and uh, you know, we'll see if we can we can create the next great athletic brand. And we're Pretty excited with what we've been able to uh, accomplish, even though we're, we are a, a startup company here. Derek, I'm going to sneak in a quick one that is both sports and investing, if you don't mind. But we've seen the huge popularity of these kind of investing in sports as a portfolio opportunity, a lot of private equity and other things. Fenway, I think, is a prominent example. But uh, the performance of the teams isn't actually that great. Do you think this is something that more investors should get involved with? Or do you think we should kind of pull back from this idea and maybe go back to kind of the traditional way of doing sports ownership and access? 
No, I think people are always going to invest in sports. I, you know, I, I think there's one thing that always year in and year out, people enjoy watching sports, but it's the one thing that you have to enjoy live. Because in this day and age, with all of the, the phones and how information is is transferred from person to person, I mean, you, you have to watch it live, otherwise you miss it. So I think investing in sports is still uh, is something that is, is a positive. I, I obviously am coming from being an investor in a team down here in Miami with the Marlins organization. So I don't think that's going to change it anytime soon.